session tonight in Jesus name I thank the Lord that the lockdown is being relaxed and even at the headquarters here in Lagos the lockdown is uh, considerably relaxed and so we are going to almost start our meetings in Lagos and so we appeal to all our brethren get ready i'll be in your districts we'll be at bagada and let's make it work that we're excited that the lockdown is now relaxed in lagos as well as in all the other states we'll be giving you updates as to how things will be done as we resume in full a force of what the lord has committed into our hands thank you and god bless you let's pray together father we bless your name for this session thank you for your word thank you for your truth thank you for the impartation of your grace and your goodness and your gifts and your righteousness and the riches of the kingdom into every one of our lives we're asking O lord that today you reach once again every minister for the gift and the grace of God in our lives in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight we're coming to Revelation chapter 3. And we're looking at the message of Christ to the church in Philadelphia. And it's in Revelation chapter 3, reading from verse 7. Please open your Bible. God bless you as usual. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, He seeks, says he, that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. And then he tells us in verse 8, he says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. In verse 9, it says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which said, Dear Jews, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Verse 10 tells us, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. In verse 11, he tells us, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Then in verse 12, him that overcometh, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. In conclusion, it says in verse 13, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Those are the verses we're looking at today. This was a good church. This was a saved church, a sanctified church. It was a spirit-filled church, a soul-winning church, a supplicating church, a second-coming church. They were waiting for the coming of the Lord. In every way, as we look at the message of Christ to this church, it was an exemplary church. And so we're looking at the message, the exemplary church with an evangelistic open door. The exemplary church 
we is an evangelistic open door. And as we look at our church in a global way, we look at our church in a continental way, the whole of each continent, and we look at our church in a national way, every nation, and we look at our church even at the headquarters there, here is what we want to be. The headquarters church, the local church, the national church, and the church, Deeper Life Bible Church, everywhere to be an exemplary church with an evangelistic open door that the lord will be able to tell you and tell me and tell us he has set an open door before us which none can shut and i pray that as the lord opens the doors we'll go through those doors and we will do the will of god without looking back in jesus name today we're dividing the message to three parts Number one, the supreme authority of the head of the church. That's Christ. As he introduced himself as the head of the church, is holy, is truthful, he has the key, he has the authority, and when he opens, none can shut, and when he shuts the door or locks the door, no one can open the supreme authority of the head of the church point number two the sanctified ambassadors at the height of consecration as you look at this church the church in philadelphia you will see their level of consecration you will see their commitment you will see the obedience to the word of god and you will see the commendation the praise of god upon them they were as you look at all the other churches this church was at the height of consecration and not only that the pastor there all the members ambassadors of christ all the ministers there ambassadors of christ and all not only professing but possessing the sanctification experience the sanctified ambassadors at the height of consecration Point number three, the steadfast anchor of hope for the conqueror. He told them as they overcame, they have been overcoming, but he wanted them to continue overcoming. He wanted them to be steadfast and to have an anchor and not to be shifted here and there, to be stable, to be solid, and to be trustworthy. Steadfast anchor of hope for the conquerors. Let's come to point number one as we look at the supreme authority of the head of the church. We're looking at Revelation chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 7. It tells us in verse 7, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, These things says he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, he that shutteth and no man openeth. Here we find the head of the church introducing himself to the church in Philadelphia. And the same way is introducing himself to you, to me, to us as individuals, as servants of God. And he's introducing himself unto us as the church, the church that we pastor. Now there are four things we're looking at. Number one is holy. Number two is true. Number three, he has the key of David. And number four, he opens, no one can shut, and he shuts, and no one can open. Number one, the divine attribute of Christ. The divine attribute of Christ is there in verse 7. These things says he that is holy. Here is the holy son of God. Even heaven declares is holy. The Father declares is holy. The angels declare is holy. Even the demons declare is holy. All the disciples declare that Christ is holy. Look at Mark chapter 1 verse 24. In Mark chapter 1 verse 24 saying, let us alone. These were demons talking. These were evil spirits talking. Let us alone. What have we to do with thee? Thou Jesus of Nazareth. And thou come to destroy us, I know thee who thou art, the Holy 
born of God. Even the devils declared him to be holy. And of course the disciples too. We're looking at Acts chapter 3. In Acts chapter 3, we're looking at verse 14. Acts chapter 3, reading from verse 14. It tells us, but ye denied the Holy One and the Jews. Here is the apostle preaching to uh, the Jews. And he said, Christ is holy. He is the Holy One. And you desired a murderer to be granted unto you. All the disciples now came together in chapter 4 of Acts. Acts chapter 4, reading from verse 27. And in their prayer, look at what they said about Jesus. For of a truth, he gave thy holy child jesus holy child jesus whom thou hast anointed both herod and pontius pilate when the gentiles and the people of israel were gathered together you understand there the apostles they said is the holy child jesus now the angel is going to affirm in luke chapter 1 verse 35 luke chapter 1 Verse 35, here the angel was talking to Mary. And as he told the Mary, he said, And that holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. He referred to him as holy. Number one, then, the divine attribute of Christ. He is holy in heart, in life, in thought, in demonstration, in interaction in his nature in everything that he did in his character within by his disciples or before the angels or before the sanhedrin or before the pharisees and the sadducees every word every thought every act every move every decision holy holy through and through the divine attribute of christ we're coming to number two there is the deserved affirmation of Christ. We'll come back to Revelation chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 7. In Revelation chapter 3 verse 7, this thing says, He that is holy, he that is true. That's the divine affirmation. He is true. Look at John chapter 14 verse 6. The Lord Jesus Christ talking to the people, he said, he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. Jesus says unto him, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the truth. The truth of God, the truth personified, the truth proclaimed, and the truth that penetrates every heart, and the final truth that God has given unto man, unto humanity. I am the truth, the life, no man comes unto the Father, but by me. In John chapter 1, reading from verse 16. John chapter 1 reading from verse 16, and of his fullness have we all received grace for grace. And then in verse 17, in verse 17, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. You know, he has all the truth, truth for your life and truth for our eternal life, and truth for the grace of God, and truth for our salvation, and truth for our living here on earth now, and truth until we get to heaven. He is the truth, and the whole truth of God has been given unto him. The way, the truth, and the life. And look at John chapter 8, and we're reading from verse 32. John chapter 8 reading from verse 32 it tells us in verse 32 it's talking to the believers the people that have believed on him and the people that have held him as the savior as their sin bearer and as their substitute as the redeemer he now tells them that if they continued in his word then would they be his disciples indeed and then he said and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free ye shall know the truth the truth he has brought unto us the truth he has declared unto us from salvation to sanctification to holy ghost baptism 
to the purity of heart and to the sincerity of life and to the light we ought to have and to the message of the kingdom the whole truth he has given us and you shall know and you shall understand and you shall believe and you shall be convinced and you shall be convicted by the truth and you shall know the truth you know the truth what he said and you know the truth himself the truth personified and the truth shall make you free it tells us in verse 36 in verse 36 it says if the son therefore shall make you free he's talking about the truth now because he is the truth he is the way he is the life and he said if the truth the son that is the truth personified shall make you free ye shall be free indeed it tells us in revelation chapter 19 and reading from verse 11 revelation chapter 19 verse 11 it says and i saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he that sat on him was called faithful and true he was called faithful and true faithful f capital true t capital that is this is his nature this is his name this is his characteristics this is his attitude and this is his attribute and this is what you find in him that he is the truth is called the faithful is called true and in righteousness does he judge and make war number one this head of the church christ our savior christ our redeemer christ our all in all he has the divine attribute the divine attribute of holiness number two he has the deserved affirmation that he is true true and trustworthy everything he said you can trust everything he declared you can trust everything he has proclaimed you can stand on because there's no falsehood there's no error and there's no trace of any kind of deception in anything he has done anything he has said he is the truth the deserved affirmation of christ number three the destined authority of christ the destined authority of christ it tells us in revelation chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 7 it says unto the angel of the church in philadelphia write this thing says he that is holy number one that is true number two that has the key of david that has the key of david you understand the key of royalty the key the key of the king and the key of authority and the one that opens and no one can shut here is the destined authority of christ look at isaiah chapter 22 and we're looking at verse 22 isaiah chapter 22 reading from verse 22 and the key of the house of david will i lay upon his shoulder so he shall open and none shall shut he shall shut and none shall open he's talking about the final authority that resides in christ is what carriage authority is a decree his declaration was a decree his declaration is proclamation carried authority he is the one that has the key that opens the door the door of salvation to the whole of humanity is sacrificed open the door is atonement open the door the shedding of his blood open the door the word of his mouth open the door the promise he gave whosoever will call upon the name of the lord and whosoever cometh to me i will in no wise cast out everything he said open the door for everyone the door of salvation he opened that the door of holiness like no holiness had been since the world began he opened that door and the door of the power the spirit coming upon man he opened the door and the door of healing and the door of deliverance and the door of the riches of the kingdom and the door to get to heaven he opened the door 
and he said, I have the key, the key of David. I open and no one can shut. I shut and no one can open. That's how he opened the door to the Gentiles to come into the kingdom. And the Jews could not close that door. And the Gentiles could enter in as he opened the door of faith unto them. He has the destined authority as Christ. Let's come back to Revelation chapter 1. We're reading from verse 18. Revelation chapter 1, reading from verse 18. Here is Christ being described unto us. He himself said, I am he that liveth. I was dead and behold I am alive forevermore look at this amen and have the keys of hell and of death he has the key of hell and of death what does that mean when he closes the door of hell and the door of death and the door of the grave and the door of eternal punishment when he closes that door by his atonement he closes that door by his reconciliation, regeneration. He has provided for us. Nobody can open that door and he can open the, he can open the door of heaven then as he closes the door of hell. And as he closes the door of death, he can open the door of life, of eternal life, of uh, everlasting life and of heaven. He is the one that has the key. The key of hell and the key of death. And but now he has given that to the believer as well. In our identification with him. In Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. And we're reading from verse 18. In Matthew chapter 16 verse 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock... I will build my church. That is the statement that Peter had made that thou art the son of the living God. He says on that rock, on that statement, on that scripture, on that foundation, the eternal foundation, which is Christ, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and now in verse 19 in verse 19 it says and i will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven you see he's giving us the key as well and now we can go ahead in his name in his authority, in his power, by his authorization. We can use the key of his name and the key of his power. Open the door for people to come into salvation and lock the door against evil, against the devil, against demons, against disease, against affliction, against the power of darkness and whatever we open for the blessings to come in and whatever we shot for the evil and the cause to be locked out it will be so because we have that same key of christ in our hand we're coming back to revelation chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 7 again the decreed announcement by christ the decreed announcement by christ it says and to the angel of the church in philadelphia write this thing says he that is holy one he that is true that's number two he that has the key of david that's number three and now here is what that key will do number four he that openeth and no man shutteth he that shutteth and no man openeth you know if you were to think about all the people that came into the kingdom of god as christ opened the door you will think that people would have been able to shut that door think about saul the saul of tassos as christ opened the door for him to come into the church and for him to come into the kingdom 
and for him to come into the ministry and for him to come into the service of the Lord. When you think about it, the apostles would have liked to shut the door against Saul. He has done so much evil, has imprisoned all those believers, and they would have said, No, he cannot have that salvation and the grace of God. But Christ opened the door, and no man could shut it. You would have thought that the Pharisees, of which um, Saul was a member, they could have shut the door and said, No, it's for us. No, we sent him for Aaron. We told him to go and arrest all those people in Damascus. They could not shut the door. Satan could have shut the door. He could have said, No, Saul will not be converted because he's the prime agent of his program and of his project. But even Satan could not shut the door against Saul of Tarsus. He is the one that opens the door, and no man and no Satan. And no devil, and no demon, and no power of darkness can shut. And he shuts the door, and no man can open. That is the authority of the Lord. And that is the power of the Lord. Look at Acts chapter 12. Reading from verse 6, Acts chapter 12. We're looking at verse 6. It says, and when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, and behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison and he smote Peter but on the side and raised him up saying, arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And then in verse 8, we're told, And the angel said unto him, Gird up thyself, and bind thy, thy, on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said, And he says unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, he tells us, And he went out, and he followed him, and wish not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but he thought he saw a vision. And then in verse 10, in verse 10, we're told, and when they were past the first and the second watch, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth into the city, which opened to them of his own accord. Christ the Master, Christ the Lord, had sent that angel and had said, I still have a work for Peter to do. And so go get him out of that prison. And there was an iron door lodged that nobody could open except the people that had the key in their hands. But as they came to that iron door, the angel and Peter, the apostle. The iron door opened to them of his own accord. That's the, they didn't even have to shout. They didn't have to call. They didn't have to pray. They didn't have to do anything. Christ quietly was there and he opened that gate. Is the one that has the final authority and the declared authority, and the destined authority, and the decreed announcement, I open, and no one can shut. I shut, and no one can open. And it opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And now we're told in verse 11, in verse 11, it tells us, And when Peter was come to himself, that he see knew now, no more, it's not a dream, it's not a vision, this is for real. He said, Now I know of a truth, of a surety, that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hands of Herod and 
from all the expectation of the Jews, of the people of the Jews. The same thing he'll do for you. The same thing he'll do for our church. He has the key, and we have the key. He's passed the key to our hands. He opens the door, and no one can shut it. He shuts the door, and no one can open. And the door is open to you for me and for the church in Jesus' name. Let's come to point number two now. In point number two, we're looking at the sanctified ambassadors at the height of consecration. And it's in Revelation chapter 3, reading from verse 8. Revelation chapter 3, we're reading from verse 8. I know thy works. Behold, I've set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. And then in verse 9, he tells us in verse 9, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, with all their powers of darkness, which say they are Jews, they are religious, but they are diabolical. It says, I'll make them who say they are Jews and they are not. And, but do lie, behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Then in verse 10, it says in verse 10, because thou hast kept the watch of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And then in verse 11, it says in verse 11, Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. I pray no one, no man, no woman will take your crown in Jesus' name. Let's look at this. We're looking at seven things here as we look at the uh, sanctified ambassadors at the height of their consecration. Number one, the privilege of open door for sacrificial service. The privilege of open door for sacrificial service. We're looking at Revelation chapter 3, and we're looking at verse 8. It says in verse 8, I know thy works. I know thy activities. I know your passion. I know your pursuit. I know your performance. I know your sacrifice. I know your decision to serve me and to do everything I've said before you to do. I know thy works. Behold, I have said before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. The privilege of open door for sacrificial service. In fact, it's not just one door. It's open to us doors of ministration. Doors of service, doors of evangelistic outreach, doors of edifying ministry. He has opened the door unto us. And he says, no man can shut the door. We need to understand that. When two doors are open, when three doors are open, when four, five doors are open, doors of opportunity. And then you have to go through one, and finish that and go through the next and finish that and while you're doing number one number two remains open number three remains open it says i set that door before you and it's open and no man can shut it let me bring an explanation illumination for you for us for example for our church god has opened the door of evangelistic outreach at the headquarters here, we just had the opening of the door for services. We were planning that this coming weekend will be in Oyo State, 
open door. And then after that, we'll go to Ocean Stage, open door. And then after that, we'll go to Kuala Stage, open door. After that, we're going to go to AKT, open door. And on those stage, open door. And having gone through all the open doors in the southwest, we're going to also go to uh, the south, south, after that, southeast, and everywhere. But you understand, all the doors are open. And as the doors are open, we now we didn't know that the Lagos uh, headquarters, the doors will open suddenly. And we just had the announcement now, the doors are open in Lagos at the headquarters. And we have been shut down, we have been held in all these uh, six months now. On your stage, the door is open, we're going to reschedule. Ocean stage, the door is open, we're going to reschedule. And the uh, Quara stage uh, and the uh, Ikiti stage, the door is still open, nobody will shut the door, we're still coming. But because of the urgency of the situation and because of the open door over here now at the headquarters, we don't want uh, the government and the people of Lagos and the members in Lagos to think the door is open. Are you abandoning us? Are you running away from Lagos? We're going to make use of the opportunity at this time. So don't be offended and don't be unhappy. The door is, it, is still open and we're going to come through those doors. Only that we're going to reschedule, we're going to replant. The privilege is there and for you also so the door is open and for everyone the door is open it's a privilege of the open door for us to offer our sacrificial service number two the prevention of offensive denial despite small strength we're looking at verse 8 and it says in verse 8 for thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word and has not denied my name. Look at this church and look at the members there. Little strength, small strength, moderate strength. It's like when it says if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, if you have a strength as a grain of mustard seed, small and little, you cannot say my strength is little, my strength is small, my faith is little, my faith is small, and that's why I cannot keep the word of God. It says to this church, it says to the leader in this church, it says to the members of this church, you have a little strength, and yet you have kept my word, and you have not offensively denied my name. The prevention of offensive denial despite small strength. With that small strength, you can do all things you have to do. Look at Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, it says, I can do all things. Why don't you say that with me? I can do all things. Why don't you emphasize that first word, I? I can do all things. Now, I can. Somebody there say, I can. You can, you will, you must, in Jesus' name, I can do all things. Brother, sister, how many things? All things, all things that the Lord has said before you. Even though your strength is small, even though your faith appears to be small, everything the Lord has ordained for you with that little strength, with that small strength, you will accomplish and you'll be able to testify, I can do, I will do, I have to do, I have done all things through Christ which strengthens me. Number three is the power for overall dominion over Satan's synagogue. We're coming to Revelation chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 9. Revelation chapter 3 and we're looking here at verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie, behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. He will humble them. 
it will humiliate them. They will fall down before the minister there, before the servant of God there, before the sanctified ambassador there, before the sanctified members of the church there. He will give them such dominion, overall dominion, over the synagogue of Satan. It's able to do that at the people who had oppressed them in the past and the people who had put uh, any evil power upon them before the table will turn and they will rise and they will stand on the authority of the word of God they will overpower the enemy they will overcome the enemy they will overturn the enemy they will overthrow all those enemies and the same thing with us it says he'll give us the power for overall dominion over satan synagogue it tells us in isaiah isaiah chapter 49 verse 23 in isaiah chapter 49 verse 23 and king shall be thy nursing fathers I wanted to hear your amen and their queens shall be thy nursing mothers they shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth and lick up the dust of thy feet and thou shalt know that i am the lord for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me they shall not be ashamed that tarry in my sight they shall not be ashamed that are importunate in their praying. They shall not be ashamed that trust me and keep on trusting me. They shall not be ashamed that wait for me. As you wait for the Lord and wait upon the Lord, you will not be ashamed in Jesus' name. Let's come back to Revelation chapter 3. And we're looking at the last line of that verse 9. Revelation chapter 3 the last line of that verse 9 it says and they will know that i have loved thee those people of the synagogue they shall know that i have loved thee those people were the power of darkness and those people energized by satan in the synagogue of satan they shall know by the mighty demonstration of the power of god in your life and through your life and through your ministry they shall know that i have loved thee and look at that is the perception of observable delight in sanctified sins the perception of observable delight that even the world and the dark world and the secular world they will observe with delight that i have loved the sanctified saints you know as we give ourselves to the lord and we consecrate ourselves to the lord and we become uh, loving servants of god dutiful servants of god and we're going on in the service of the lord sacrificial service of the lord without looking back and he opens this door we go through he opens that door we go through and we serve the lord sacrificially he will so love us that even the enemy will see that he delights in us we're looking at john chapter 15 and we're reading from verse 9 john chapter 15 reading from verse 9 as the father has loved me so have i loved you uh, you need to stay on that verse and read that over and over and meditate on that through and through and then pray about that through and through and accept that and embrace that in your life it's almost unthinkable it's so deep it's so high it's so great as the father has loved jesus christ think about that love how deep the love is how broad the love is how high the love is how unending that love is as the father has loved me so in the same way to the same depth to the same height to the same length and the same breadth so have i loved you continue ye in my love 
I pray that that love other people will perceive, other people will tell, and you too can tell, and don't go, don't go to the Lord in prayer saying again, oh Lord, look at my condition, uh, nobody loves me, heaven loves you, the angels love you, Christ loves you, the Father loves you, as the Father has loved Christ, so as Christ also loved you, continue in the love of Christ. We come now to number five there. It says in number five, the perseverance with obedient dedication to the sacred scriptures. It tells us in Revelation chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 10, Revelation chapter 3 verse 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, you have kept the word of my patience, it says you have persevered, and you kept, and you keep on keeping, and you kept and you go on keeping and you are not going back you are not turning back you are not even slowing down the perseverance with obedient dedication to the sacred scriptures thou hast kept the word of my patience that's the testimony he had against the saints and against the servant of god in philadelphia is the same testimony he had for his own disciples is the same testimony he wants to have about you like we're told in john chapter 17 verse 6 john chapter 17 reading from verse 6 it says i have given them thy word have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world and thine they were and thou gavest them me and they have kept thy word they have kept thy word the Lord testified about his own disciples and he testified concerning the believers the ambassadors the saints of god and the servants of god in the church in philadelphia he testified about them he wants to testify about you before the heavenly father he wants to testify about you before the angels of god in heaven saying i have manifested the name of my father unto the men and the women that thou gavest me out of the world thine they were and thou gavest me and they one and all and they everyone and they consistently and they confidently and they courageously and they with all their heart and they without wavering and they they have promptly obeyed your word they have kept thy word it tells us in number six we're coming to revelation chapter 3 and verse 10 in revelation chapter 3 looking at verse 10 it says because thou hast kept the word of my patience i also will keep thee in the hour of temptation in the time of trial in the period of tribulation i also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth this one has a eschatological implication it's talking about the hour the time the period of trouble of temptation of tribulation and it says it will come upon all the world all the world and it's to try them that dwell on the face of the earth he's talking about the time of tribulation and he's telling us there will be protection from the overwhelming destruction of the sinful society the Lord knows how to keep the righteous and the Lord knows how to shield the righteous and to shield us away from the trial, from the trouble, from the tribulation that will come at the end of time. We're told in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 9. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 looking at verse 9. For God has not appointed us to wrath. God has not appointed us for trial. God has not appointed us for Jacob's trouble. God has not appointed us for the period of tribulation. For God has not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. You remember the story of the flood? 
And do you remember that the Lord put Noah and his family into the ark before the flood began? The same thing is going to do. The Lord is going to catch away. And the loss is going to take away the people of God. And the people, the righteous saints and servants of God, the glorious church, is going to take us away in the rapture before the flood of the judgment of the wrath of the tribulation will fall upon this earth. Do you remember the story of Lord coming out of Sodom? Lord and his family came out of Sodom before the fire of the wrath of God, of the judgment of God fell upon the Sodomites. In the same way God has not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation, but to obtain deliverance, but to obtain rescue, and to obtain removal from this place, the rapture, by our Lord Jesus Christ. We are coming to number seven is the pursuit of the overcomer's destiny by steadfast soldiers. We are coming to Revelation chapter 3. And we are reading from verse 11. It says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown. It says, You have something. Hold it fast. You see, it's wonderful for the Lord to declare that thou hast this and you need to hold it fast so that no one will take your crown. If you have salvation, you have something. You have hope of heaven. You have something. You have the witness of the Holy Spirit that you belong to the Lord. You have something. You have the sanctification experience and you have the solid ground that you are walking in the way of the Lord. You have something. You have the witness, the, the testimony of the Holy Ghost that you belong to God and Christ has gone to heaven to prepare a place for you and when he's gone, he will come again and take you unto himself. That confidence you have, that assurance you have and that faith you have that solid ground you have you have something hold that fast which thou hast that no man take your crown you have the promise of god and you have the crown awaiting you it says hold that fast which you have so that nobody will take your crown and then he assures us is coming again behold i come quickly behold i come quickly it's been giving us that assurance look at um, revelation chapter one looking there at verse seven revelation chapter 1 we're looking at verse 7 behold a comet were clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him even so amen the assurance is there he is coming let's go to revelation chapter 3 and revelation chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 3 it says in revelation chapter 3 reading from verse 3 it says remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and hold fast don't let anybody take that conviction that commitment away from you and hold fast and repent and if thou therefore shall not watch i will come i will come as a thief is coming as a thief in the night and thou shalt not know what hour i will come upon thee he is coming the assurance of his coming the suddenness of his coming and is coming very soon and he wants you to hold on to what you have until he comes he tells us in revelation chapter 16 and we're looking at verse 15 in revelation chapter 16 reading there from verse 15 he said behold i come behold i come i come as a thief blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments lest he walk naked and the sea ashamed he is coming revelation chapter 22 and we're reading from verse 12 in revelation chapter 22 reading there from verse 12 it says behold i come 
behold I come behold I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be that's why he says he reassures us again I am coming hold what you have so that nobody will take your crown Revelation chapter 22 we're reading from verse 20 in Revelation chapter 22 looking at verse 20 it says he will testify this thing says surely I come quickly amen even so come Lord Jesus as we're expecting the coming of the Lord there's something we have to do we have to hold fast that which we have that nobody will take our crown we come to point number three now in point number three we'll come back to revelation in revelation now chapter three we're looking at verses 12 and 13 the steadfast anchor of hope for the conqueror the steadfast anchor of hope for the conqueror in revelation chapter 3 verse 12 him that overcometh will i make a pillar in a temple of my god and he shall go no more out and i will write upon him the name of my god and and the name of the city of my god which is new jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my god and i will write upon him my new name and then in verse 13 here is the final scene here is a good conclusion for your life in verse 13 he that has an ear and that's you that's me he that has an ear ready to hear ready to learn is teachable and it says he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit says unto the churches let's look at three things here number one the promise for conquerors the promise for the conquerors number two their perpetual presence with omnipotence their perpetual uh, presence with omnipotence number three is our perseverance in uh, obedience number one uh, the promise for conquerors it tells us in revelation chapter 3 and in verse 12 uh, it says him uh, that overcometh will i make a pillar in the temple of my god that's the promise he has given us he says you will be in the temple not only that you'll be a pillar in that temple not only that you'll be established in that temple you'll be there forever and ever as long as god is alive which is forevermore that temple of my god will be forever and the pillar of the temple of my god will be there forever him that overcometh will i make a pillar in the temple of my god and he shall go no more out the devil will not drive you out in that place when we get there there'll be no temptation anymore there'll be no satan anymore there'll be no discouragement anymore there'll be nothing to make anybody backslide there'll be nothing to make anybody think i want to go out i want to go to another place temptation over trials over troubles over discouragement over that's the time you'll be there forever and ever and you'll go no more out and our write upon him the name of my god and the name of the city of my god which is new jerusalem the name of new jerusalem not the earthly jerusalem not the uh, dusty jerusalem the name of the heavenly jerusalem will even be upon him and upon you and he says that jerusalem comes out of heaven from my god and i will write upon him my new name i pray god will make you a conqueror and all the promises he has made for the conquerors for the overcomers all those promises will be yours in jesus name let's look at uh, revelation chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 7 revelation chapter 2 we're reading here from verse 7 is the promise for the conqueror he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit says unto the churches to him to her to that individual to the child of god to the saint of god to the servant of god that overcomes you overcomes the flesh you overcomes the devil you overcomes the world 
You overcome his temptation. You overcome his everything the devil is trying to use to pull him down or to draw him back. To him that overcometh, I will give to each of the tree of life. You understand? That's the tree of life Adam missed, Eve missed in the garden of Eden. And they were not able to eat that to live forever. And the Lord said, let's they put forth their hand and eat of the fruit of the tree of life and live forever. He drove them out. But he says, now you will live forever and it will give you to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. The promise for overcomers. You will be an overcomer. I will be an overcomer. We will be overcomers in Jesus' name. Let's come back to Revelation chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 12. Their perpetual presence with omnipotence. Their perpetual presence with omnipotence. Potence. Him that overcometh, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He writes his new name of upon the forehead of all those who make it to that final place and to that final rest. I will be there forever and forever in the presence of the omnipotent God, omnipresent God, and omniscient God will be there forever and ever. We will live with him and abide with him. In John chapter 12, verse 26. John chapter 12, reading from verse 26. It says, if any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there also shall my servant be. Is in heaven now where I am, there shall also my servant be. Is in that new Jerusalem that is about to come down from heaven, from the presence of God. And he says, where I am, there shall also my servant be. Is in that place where there's no sorrow, where there are no tears, where there is no sin, where there's no suffering, no sea, no night, and the everything is perfect over there and Christ is there that where I am there also shall my servant be if any man serve me him will my father honor he'll honor you with his presence he'll honor you with the stable place in heaven he'll honor you with a crown he'll honor you with the reward he has promised for his own the perpetual presence with omnipotence and now the final one we're looking at revelation chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 13 revelation chapter 3 we're looking at verse 13 our perseverance in obedience he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit says unto the churches you understand that he that has an ear to hear when somebody calls you and you answer yes and you answer here i am and you answer what you you have me to do that means you have ears to hear when you hear a warning and then you take it to yourself that means you have ear to hear when you are given assignment and you are given duty and then you go to that duty and you plunge into that duty and you do that duty the way you want it done that means you have ear to hear when you hear his voice and you hear satan's voice and you hear the voice of self and you hear the voice of the world and you hear the voice of enemies and then you brush aside all the other voices and only his voice will you listen to only his voice will you obey only his voice will you follow that means you have an ear to hear he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit says unto the churches the lord has spoken to you the Lord has spoken to me. He has called us to obedience. He has appreciated our ministry. He has appreciated our ambassadorial role that we're serving the Lord. And we're putting everything we have into the service of God. And he says, don't stop, continue. 
It says, don't stand still, continue. It says, don't look back, continue. You have heard my voice, you have heard my word, and you have obeyed my word. You have kept my word, even with your little strength, your small strength. Continue like that, so far, so good. Continue to have the ear to hear. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. The Lord will bless every one of us as we manifest the ear to hear. Let's rise up now and let's talk to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, we thank you for what you have revealed unto us today. You want to make us an exemplary church. You want to make me an exemplary servant. You want to make me an exemplary Christian. And I want to follow, and I want to follow through on that evangelistic open door. Tell the Lord that you accept everything he has said. What he said about himself he is holy. He is holy trust him he will not lie to you and he's truthful he's trustworthy trust him and he has the key every door that is closed against you the lord will open every door he has opened before you even if he has opened two doors three doors five doors as you go on one by one one after the other none of the doors will be shut he has put the key in your hand as well and let the words of your mouth be the words that will come out of the mouth of Christ. That the words of your mouth will bind and no one will say no. And the words of your mouth will lose and no one will say no. You have that same Christ-like authority and Christ-like authorization that whatever you say will be done and you want to be. You want to stand as an ambassador of Christ sanctified holy purposeful the privilege of open door you want to hold on and then uh, there'll be no denial you will not deny his name uh, the grace to stand the lord will give unto you and you have dominion you have dominion every power of darkness coming against your life they will bow in Jesus' name. Even when you are not talking, just walking, there will be that invisible angel by your side. And as you come to that iron door, iron gate, it will open for you in Jesus' name. And the people of the world will know that God has loved you. Christ has loved you. And his love will be permanent in your life in Jesus' name. Not only that, they're going to see that you have obedient dedication to the Lord and it protects you. You will not go through the great tribulation. You will not go through the trial that is going to try all the world. He has redeemed you out of the wrath of the world and you have, you have obtained the mercy of God. You'll take part in the rapture in Jesus' name. And as you know that Christ is coming again, you're holding on, you're holding fast until he comes and you're pursuing that only one thing every day to be an overcomer an overcomer brother an overcomer sister and then uh, he says he'll make you a pillar even in his temple here even in his church here even in his sanctuary here he'll make you a pillar nothing will drive you out nothing will smoke you out everything around you the lord will recondition and your place will be permanent in jesus name your ministry will be permanent in Jesus name and your opportunities will be permanent in Jesus name and as you have ears to hear and you are hearing what the Spirit has said unto the church the blessing the promises that he has pronounced and proclaimed upon you upon us upon our church will be fulfilled without any iota, any little thing taken out of the promises of God for you, for me, and for us in Jesus' name. The Lord has answered your prayer. The love of God is upon you. The favor of the Lord is upon you. He has washed away the past and he has given you a present realization. He has put the key in your hand. Go forth and you'll progress in the way, in the word, in the work of God in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, 
We thank you for the assurance you have given us today that Christ, our Lord, Christ, our Redeemer, is holy, is true, is authoritative. He has the key in his hand. He opens the door and he sets before us open door. And we know that from now till the end of our ministry, we know that all the doors are open. Nothing will shut the doors in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you because you have put us in place. You have given us strength. You have given us salvation. You have given us sanctification. You have given us the power of the Holy Ghost. And you have given us the grace to be obedient to your word. We pray, Lord, every power you have given us, every opportunity you have given us, all the strength you have given us, we will retain until the final day in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, as we reach out uh, through those open evangelistic doors and through those open open a defying doors and through doors uh, open a uh, sacred uh, ministerial doors we pray lord we will do what you have sent us to do and you will bless the word of our mouth and the work of our hand and the work you have given us to do in jesus name we pray lord that you promise that you give us the presence and you give us the stability and you give us the uh, you give us the solidity of a peace in the house of God now and then in the temple of God in the eternal future we pray that all the privileges and opportunities we will retain until that final day in Jesus name keep our ears open to your promises open to your proclamation open to the prophecy open to everything you have given you have provided for us and as we have ears to hear you will be blessing us as we are obeying you as we are walking in the path of duty every moment every day of our lives in jesus name we thank you lord because we know you have answered and we know that these days ahead will be days of victory days of triumph days of power and days of manifestation of the power of of the spirit in every one of the lives of the ministers in jesus name we thank you lord because we know you have answered in jesus mighty name we pray amen please remember that um, you know i said that we're scheduling things and it's uh, not just for your state for Undo state and portion state and all the states uh, Quara and Ikiti. we're scheduling for everyone we will soon uh, release you now uh, to preach directly on sunday except the last sunday of the month and to preach directly to your districts your local churches and your groups on uh, thursdays except uh, for power night we're going to go back to what we were before the lockdown and the ministry of the word continue to prosper in your hands in our hands together in jesus name have a good uh, night. God bless every one of you.